Hello and welcome to Access Asia. I'm Yuka Huayye, and here's what's coming up in this edition. China sends three astronauts to its permanently inhabited space station. The six-month mission bringing the country a step closer to its goal of its first manned landing on the moon by 2030. The Taliban imposes new restrictions on women's freedoms by barring them to pray aloud in each other's presence. And Hello Kitty turns 50. We take a look at the history behind the white cat that has become the second highest grossing media franchise in history, just behind Pokemon. China has sent three astronauts to its own space station, declaring the launch of the Shenzhou 19 spaceship a complete success. It comes 21 years after Beijing carried out its very first manned space mission. For the next six months, the crew will conduct various scientific experiments to help China's aim of landing astronauts on the moon by 2030. Inka Oyatade has more. It's China's latest attempt at edging closer to its goal of becoming a space superpower. It's Shenzhou 19 spacecraft blasting off into the cosmos Wednesday, and launch authorities have hailed a triumph. The spacecraft's solar panels are extended and functioning normally. I hereby announce the Shenzhou 19 manned spacecraft launch mission a complete success. This will be the Taikonauts' temporary home for the next six months, the Tiangong space station. It's here that the crew will carry out experiments intended to help China prepare for its most difficult mission yet, landing astronauts on the moon by 2030. Beijing's growing appetite for high-risk missions is increasingly making the United States uncomfortable. In April, NASA's chief warned U.S. lawmakers that Beijing wants to stake territorial claims, arguing its space program is also a military one. Speaking on Monday, China's foreign ministry spokesperson seemed to deny such claims. China stays committed to the peaceful use of outer space and opposes an arms race in outer space or weaponizing outer space. China has no intention to engage in a race with other countries in space and doesn't seek to gain an edge in space. Before getting astronauts to the moon, Beijing is celebrating the milestones achieved in Wednesday's launch. Among its crew, the country's only female space engineer, She's also one of the youngest Taikonauts from China to blast off into space. It was party time once again. From Tokyo to Seoul to Bangkok, people in costumes turned out in droves to mark Halloween, as the event, rooted in Celtic cultures, has become a fixture in many parts of Asia. But in Shanghai, authorities detained cosplayers ahead of October the 31st, the move seen as an attempt to prevent such parties from being used as a platform for political dissent. Charlotte Hughes has more. It's been described by many as a bid by Chinese authorities to clamp down on freedom of expression. Several days ago, a heavy police presence hampered Halloween celebrations in Shanghai, as some who dressed up were detained. Some said they were forced to take off their makeup at the police station. Why? No why, no why. No why, no why? No why, no why. I can't ask why. <laughs> it comes a year after images of some partygoers in China went viral as they sported outfits making fun of the government and its policies, a rare occurrence in a country intolerant of dissent. Photos circulated of people dressing up as a giant surveillance camera and COVID testers. This year, there has been no official announcement barring Halloween celebrations. But according to the BBC, some business owners in Shanghai got government notices earlier in October discouraging Halloween events. On its website, Disney's Shanghai Resort, meanwhile, displays a series of Halloween costume guidelines. Appearing to acknowledge resulting frustration among some young people in China, partygoers in South Korea and Tokyo donned costumes, including Winnie the Pooh, which has been censored by Chinese authorities after bloggers compared the cartoon to Xi Jinping. The Taliban rulers in Afghanistan have reportedly issued a new decree that restricts women's freedom even further. The bizarre new rule bars women from hearing each other's voices by prohibiting them from praying aloud in the presence of their female companions. It comes two months after the Taliban banned women's voices in public spaces. A new exhibition, meanwhile, in Paris aims to tell stories of hundreds of Afghan women who have been forced to live in the shadows since the former rebel group took over their country three years ago. Emily Boyle takes a look. 
14-year-old Muska is soon to be married. In exchange, her family will receive a water well and some solar panels. Muska's portrait is just one of hundreds hanging from the walls of this new exhibition in Paris. The photographs are part of No Woman's Land, a project which casts a light onto the daily lives of women in Afghanistan, now mostly restricted to the shadows. All the photos of women that you're going to see were taken indoors. Women can no longer exist in the public space and no longer have access to other venues. So they can no longer go to cafes or restaurants, to the gym, to parks, to swimming pools, to beauty salons. Since the Taliban returned to power in 2021, women have been almost completely confined to their homes. In August this year, women were even banned from showing their faces or speaking in public. Now, they are no longer allowed to pray in front of each other. The United Nations has accused the Taliban government of gender apartheid and potential crimes against humanity. We cannot leave Afghan women to fight alone. If we do, we have no moral ground to fight for women's rights anywhere else. Their fate determines the fate of women everywhere. The Taliban Ministry of Vice and Virtue recently pledged to ban any images of living things in the media. During their rule in the 1990s, the Taliban had outlawed most television, radio and newspapers altogether. According to her biography, she lives in London with her family, but it was in Japan that Hello Kitty was born in 1974. Since then, the mouthless white cat with a red bow over her left ear has grown to become a global pop culture phenomenon and built a formidable business empire, although her popularity waxed and waned along the way, causing her owner Sanrio to go through a series of financial ups and downs. As she turns 50, we say happy birthday to the quintessential icon of cute with Brian Quinn. At the Tokyo National Museum, a new special exhibit to celebrate the 50th birthday of one of Japan's most significant cultural icons, Hello Kitty. Created in 1974 as a decoration to help sell small gifts and accessories, her first appearance was on this coin purse. Her biography says she's actually a little girl, five apples high, full name Kitty White, who lives outside London, capitalizing on a fascination with Europe among young Japanese girls at the time. Over the decades, she's gone on to conquer the globe, launching the phenomenon known as kawaii, or cute, culture. Kawaii. She's cute. She looks good in all costumes. 50,000 products sold in 130 countries, cross-promotional licensing deals with brands from Nike to the LA Dodgers baseball team. Over the years, Hello Kitty has brought in nearly $90 billion, making it the second most valuable media franchise of all time. The company behind her, Sanrio, has created hundreds of characters, but none with her staying power. That simple design with a round face and a button-like nose, a big bow and no mouth makes it possible for her to be anything. She's accepted by various generations and countries. Sanrio has struggled over the decades amid Hello Kitty's fluctuating popularity with peaks in 1999 and 2014. Profits and share price are way up since new CEO Tomokuni Tsutsuji took over in 2020. His strategy based in large part on diversifying content with new characters, but the company's true star remains Hello Kitty. A very special Otanjobi Omerito to Hello Kitty there. And that's all for this edition of Access Asia. Remember, you can watch this and all our previous episodes on our website, france24.com, or listen to them wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time, but stay tuned if you can. There's plenty more world news coming up.